So guys, it is rebuild time yet again on a Sunday and we are here north of the border taking on the challenge of Glasgow Rangers. Now Rangers did lose the league in real life to Celtic but did make it all the way to the Europa League final which is a very, very impressive achievement even if they did lose the final on penalties to Eintracht Frankfurt. We are going to pick things up on the final day of the SPL season in 2022 to take Rangers forward over the course of the next five years and see how well we can develop this club but one thing I will say is with these rebuilds where they're kind of getting to a certain point now I wanted to set myself an additional challenge so what we will be doing is we will only be signing Scottish players now I will give myself a little bit of a wiggle room if the player is at the club already uh, and they're not Scottish I will potentially renew their contracts but I'll be actively trying to sell the players and every single player that I bring into the club will either be Scottish fully or partially Scottish so this is going to be a little bit of a challenge we've got the blue in the background as we take on the challenge of Rangers so let's dive in and take a look at things so first and foremost I'm using a custom database to get this game file as you can see it right now, the date in-game is the 30th of May 2022. Celtic have just won the SPL title. If we expand the full league, as you can kind of see, here is everything. The correct results, all of that good stuff. I will say, if you want to do this, and get your hands on this database this is the video you need the thumbnails flashing up now please do go and check it out on the channel it is a good video it shows you guys how to get the most updated version of things including all of the transfers and stuff that have happened in real world football so this is where we're going to pick things up we are the rangers manager going into the 2022 2023 season let me know down in the comments how you think rangers will actually get on next season will they be able to take the title away from celtic but we're going to jump ahead through the summer see if i can do any transfer business and see if we have any new players ready to start season number one so then we move into season number one and I just want to start on the transfers page because we didn't sign anybody, no one at all, um, which to be honest, I think this Rangers squad is pretty much good enough uh, to go and reclaim that SPL title. This is the tactic that we will be running for this. It is called Penny Arcade. Now, I, I did a little bit of research and this is kind of a song of Rangers. I apologize. I'm not fully familiar with Scottish football, but I did a little bit of a Google and I've been told this is a uh, this is a Rangers uh, song. So hence the name of the video here uh, of the tactic here today It is a 4-2-3-1. So nothing overly adventurous, but we do have some really, really good players here uh, to Bernier is good. Connor Goldson, I like the look of. Um, I actually quite like the look of this left back here. Uh, Borna uh, Barisic, um, Croatian. I think he looks really good. Good crossing, good corners and stuff like that. I, I like my fullbacks to be able to take corners and stuff like that. Uh, Ryan Jack, Glenn Kamara. Uh, Hadji, of course, is obviously in the team, um, which is interesting. He's only a three-star player because I think, again, he could be a real good player for us moving forward. Uh, uh, Alibo, we do have Ryan Kent, and then obviously Morelos, uh, top of the man, who loves a red card um as you can see though it's nothing overly expect like it's, it's nothing out of the ordinary it's just a, it's, it's a 4 2 3 one and i'm hoping it can go ahead and have a really good time uh in this rangers team um obviously in terms of the competitions and stuff we are we won our friendly cup cares uh we are in the cinch premiership we also have the champions league we do have to qualify for that though we are in the third qualifying rank for that we've got the scottish cup and the premier sports cup as well uh we're not in either of those cup competitions just yet uh, but the board basically aren't judging on anything in this first season apart from the scottish cinch premiership uh which we will obviously be trying to reclaim off of the hands of uh, a pretty dominant celtic over the past uh, multiple years obviously we've come second uh in the three of the last four years well obviously winning the other the other title so hopefully we can reclaim the spl title and you know kind of have a little bit of a dent into some of the champions league stuff if we go and have a look at the spl and the season preview we are predicted to finish second obviously celtic are the favorites to go and go on and retain that title and go back to back um yeah got alan mcgregor 40 year old goalkeeper Hmm, 
Not a, not a huge fan, not a huge fan of that, if I'm perfectly honest. But we'll see what happens. Obviously, we're going to try and improve ranges as much as humanly possible. And I want, the, want to make them the hub for all things Scottish football. So we'll be trying to pick up as many of the new gens in the Scottish world of football and bringing in some of the players. Now, obviously, some of the, like Robertson, Tierney, McTominay probably are all out of the question. But all other English, uh, like players who are playing in England who are Scottish, I will be trying to bring back north of the border. So let's simulate this first season and see how we get on so then guys at the end of the first season we have managed to win the scottish premiership title we did so by just two points we got 90 points throughout the course of the season 99 goals scored 22 goals conceded which is really impressive considering our goalkeeper is a massive 40 years of age um so we've done really well uh, aberdeen having a little bit of a slip here which uh you know is is what it is we have done a rebuild of aberdeen previously uh but uh yeah not not doing so well here we finished top celtic in second so we both qualify for the champions league hearts st Mirren, and dundee united go into the europa conference league uh by the looks of things so hopefully both ourselves and celtic can get into the champions league proper because then that helps with the coefficient and then that may help us a little bit further down the line but obviously we will be going to try and win the spl every single season in terms of some of the other competitions though this is how we got on we got into the group stage of the champions league fully uh but we did get knocked out i'll go over that in a second actually no let's go over that now so we got into the champions league uh we got into the group stages let's have a look at all the groups because i cannot remember them we were in group c as you can see on the left hand side in a group with atletico madrid ac milan and dortmund now obviously we didn't go through. We didn't finish in third to drop down into the Europa League. Um, Atletico go through top on nine points. AC Milan second on eight points. Dortmund uh, in third also on eight points. Then ourselves on six points. So a tightly contested group, but just not really at that level right now uh, to take things on to that next level. Um, in the Scottish Cup, we got knocked out in the fourth round by Hibs. This is a really, really poor showing in the Scottish Cup for me. But the board weren't judging me on it. So I thought, why not? Uh, let's try and rotate things. And obviously, the main focus was the SPL title. We did win the Premier Sports Cup, though. Winning that one in the final against Celtic. A nice, strong 4-0 uh, victory. Tavernier with a goal. Uh, Morelos, Kimar, Roof, and uh, Sutar is how I'm going to say this dude's name. Um, looking really nice. 4-3-3 uh, of Celtic. We were obviously much better. Uh, they did have Joe Hart in goal. And we absolutely romped them to be perfectly honest uh looking very convincing there obviously celtic aren't gonna have their hands tied in the same way that i am in the fact that i'm only gonna try and sign scottish players moving forward um but we'll we'll, we'll have to see how things progress but all in all first season in the spl for me as rangers boss and i think it's gone pretty well at uh, 29 victories five draws four losses and a title we do have some money to spend going into season number two We've got just shy of 10 million, 9.25 million to spend on some of the best Scottish talent out there. Let's see how we get on. Before we talk about the transfers for season number two, this is my little plea to you to like and subscribe today's video if you are enjoying it and you are new around here. It really does help me out and help the channel out and get these sorts of videos out to as many people as humanly possible. So if you could do that, just take a second, just go down there, drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here, and let's go and take a look at these transfers for season number two. So there are some players who I actually do have to talk to you about that I did sign in January last season that I did speak about in the season wrap-up video um so we did sign lewis ferguson here from aberdeen he did have a release clause of 775k now i know there's a bit of animosity between rangers and aberdeen um so they did sell him to me for 775k it was his release clause he then did go on uh, to have a relatively solid season for us in the scottish premier league uh, but he is a very well-rounded player here nice leadership qualities on him good natural fitness good stamina and stuff like that so that was really good we also dipped into the championship and picked up tom uh, mcintyre here from reading now i th actually think this guy's a really good looking center back you know what i mean attributes wise very very good player um i think he has the ability to go on and be an exceptional center back he's he's now capped by scotland two caps here i don't know if that was prior to me buying him or or, or post um but he's he's a very solid center back good heading and stuff all the, all the attributes you look for in a good center back this guy has them and he's playing for Reading. 
who, as a caveat, were the worst team that I saw live last season as Bristol City beat them and they had a terrible season. Uh, we also signed Ryan Gould from Vancouver. Um, this, there's, a, there's a lot been mentioned about this guy in... He used to be an absolute wonder kid. He had a nice shiny silver card back in the day uh, on FIFA. And he's bounced around a couple of clubs. And we picked him up from Vancouver in Canada. Obviously, they do play in the MLS. Uh, I think he's just brilliant, to be perfectly honest. Last season for us in the Premiership, uh, Scott Cinch Premiership, he had 15 appearances, 4 goals, 7 assists. Average of 7.25 since we brought him in. 3.8 million from uh, Vancouver, which I think, again, is a very solid bit of business. We then went out and we needed a left back. We are trying to sign these um the uh these scottish players we went out and picked up greg taylor from celtic now i know it's not very often celtic and rangers sell players between them uh but he wanted to leave and we thought well, let's bring in another scottish left back and we needed a little bit of depth there as well so he is a good little cover option for us obviously agreed playing time as a squad player we went and signed adam cole baby uh this guy i had a little swing and a miss with this guy i thought he was going to be much better than he was um yeah, swing and a miss. You know, sometimes you take these punts and I signed this guy for the compensation, 375k uh, that we paid Hibs for his compensation and he didn't turn out to be as good as I thought he was going to be. Uh, but he does have high determination, so I'm hoping he does kind of move things forward a little bit and become a better player. Moving things on, we got Billy Gilmore in on loan from, uh, from Chelsea. Now, he did spend last season at Celtic. Uh, average of 7.32 we are paying a 1.4 million pound loan for him 150k a month uh, to make sure uh, we kind of got his services basically there are a few cubs touting around for billy gilmore i'd ideally like to make him my player in the long run so fingers crossed we can kind of do a deal for him a bit further down the line there is an optional fee here for 40.5 million i won't be paying that much for billy gilmore but we'll see um the scottish influx uh continues we also signed ryan fraser from newcastle obviously we know what newcastle's like in fm they spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds this guy wasn't needed so i picked him up because he's a natural on both flanks for me and i'm hoping he can go in uh for 10 million pounds obviously he, he played a full season for newcastle last season but obviously they're going to be trying to move him out the door so obviously we picked him up for a cheap and cheerful in my opinion uh 10 million pounds we also signed this guy here josh doig so i'm going to say this guy's name a young left back probably a, probably a little bit better uh in the longer run than greg taylor who we did also sign as well can play as a natural on that left hand side pretty much all at the park can kind of also cover at sense back as well he's only 21 years of age four and a half star potential ability uh hopefully he can be in the squad for the remainder of this save we also signed jason kerr from wigan 6.5 million pounds for this center back again another solid scottish center back option uh you rangers fans are gonna have to let me know down in the comments how you would feel about signing all of these guys and then we got nathan patterson in on loan from everton to be uh sort of cover for that right back spot so if we go into the tactic and quick pick without restriction our best 11 this is how we're looking uh, for the second season. Uh, McLaughlin is, is here. I'm not sure about him uh, and McCrory. I'm not really not sure which goalkeeper is going to go in, so they'll probably rotate. Tavernier Golson, uh, Sutar Bassi has come up. Now, I know this guy's had a really good year. Uh, we have accepted a bid for him from Blackburn Rovers, so he may well be leaving. Uh, but I, I've heard good things about this guy, so maybe maybe FM23 is his game. Uh, then we've got Jack alongside Kamaro here, Haji, Gould, and Fraser, and then Morello up top hopefully we can retain this spl title obviously we are in the group stages of the champions league because we won the spl we don't need to qualify this time around we just go straight into the group stages which is much nicer obviously the scottish cup and the premier sports cup as well in terms of the cinch premiership we take a look at the season preview celtic still the favorites to go through they've had a couple of nice uh, additions as well if we take a look at their transfers and their transfer history you can see they're sort of bringing in some interesting players obviously there's billy gilmore uh, that we mentioned zakaria is a really nice player matt ryan axel witzel some of these players are really really nice additions that i would love to bring in um to rangers but obviously that's not the save that we're doing today so hopefully we can keep them out and win back-to-back -back spl titles um and then obviously make a little bit of progress in the european competitions that would be nice as well let's simulate this season and see how we get on 
So season number two is in the books and it, it honestly is a much more successful season than that first year. Not only have we retained the Scottish Premiership title, we've also managed to pick up the Scottish Cup and we had a nice little run in Europe as well. Not as good as Rangers in real life in this current season, but ultimately a nice little run. So we'll start on the right hand side and we'll work our way across on the competitions tab. So Premier Sports Cup, we were knocked out in the quarterfinals of this competition by Hibs. That's the team who knocked us out of the Scottish Cup last season. So maybe they could be a little bit of a bogey side for us in these cup competitions scottish cup though we do go on to win that one we beat livingston 4-0 in the final of that one so it's nice to lift another bit of silverware here Innes haji doing the work basically this guy uh three goals for him in that final including two penalties but it all counts they all count you have to score them don't you glenn kamara as well with the other one as we kind of dominate livingston here uh, then into the Champions League, Europa League uh, fiasco. We got into the Champions League group stages. Obviously, we were drawn with RB Salzburg, PSV and Napoli. So a relatively tough group. We finish in second in that group, minus six in terms of the goal difference. We obviously got battered by Salzburg somewhere along the line. But we did finish above Napoli. Uh, but unfortunately, we do drop into the Europa League where we do go through. And we were knocked out in the second knockout round by Valencia 4-2 as you can see here. So um, Valencia are a very good team. We could have come up against some some easier opponents in that knockout round, uh, but unfortunately do not do it. Uh, but a nice progression in Europe. It's not like you're getting group staged every year, so that's quite nice. Then we go into the Scottish League and uh, 94 points for us this year. Last season, it was a two-point victory over Celtic. This time around, it's, two, uh, it's four points. We've doubled that gap. Uh, over Celtic who had a pretty good season themselves uh, from from memory if we go into this their section here and take a look they actually got all the way to the semi-finals of the Europa Conference League they did lose to Arsenal and they had an absolutely abysmal run towards the end of the semi, uh, end of the season lost to us in the cup semi-final lost to Arsenal 5-1 in the Europa Conference League and then lost their last three games of the season lost to rate lost to us lost to Hearts and then lost to Dundee United 5-1 on the final day of the season big big yikes um so they they they've been, they've been making some moves so have, so have we um in terms of some of the transfers though if we go and take a look at some of the some of the stuff here obviously i've added nobody else didn't sign anybody in this january but we've got a lot of players lined up to come in for season number three 8.9 million just shy of 9 million to spend going into season number three let's get it right now Right then, going into season number three, we've been big spending and we've gone over and actually raided Aberdeen yet again. Um, so we've gone out and we've spent some money. David Turnbull comes in from Celtic first and foremost. He comes in from Celtic for £2.1 million. He was transfer listed and I know this guy can turn into a very good creative force in the central midfield. Good passing, good penalty taker, good te uh, technique as well. Really nice flair and determination. I think this is a mistake for Celtic to let this type of player go. Uh, so David Turnbull comes in for £2.1 million. We also signed Scott McKenna from Nottingham Forest. We spent £7 million million pounds on him another really really solid defender 38 caps for scotland now uh 27 years of age he's a senior head in this team uh which will be soon flooded with new gens no doubt uh but very nice good on his left foot as well six foot two brings the ball out of defense exactly what i'm looking for here then the money spinner this is where we went over and we raided aberdeen we signed calvin ramsey guys now he is potentially the best scottish right back that we could pick up um so i'm happy to have pulled him in and got him into the team as well uh, I think we've done really, really well there. I have to talk about some of the outgoings as well. We made £40 million this year. Uh, Kimar Roos gone. Morelos has gone to Bournemouth. Uh, James Tavernier has gone for £5.5 .5 million. I know you guys are going to absolutely slaughter me for that. Um, Rangers fans. And then we move on. We've got another £27 million we've made here. Aribo's gone. Glenn Camaro's gone. Uh, Greg Taylor's gone. He was only here for a year. So we've started making some money. We brought in Ollie McBurney on a free another scottish player um obviously that's the aim of this rebuild steve uh, i worked with ollie when he was on loan from swansea at bristol rovers so um i know this guy's a little bit of a character uh, um we've also got aaron hickey as well we signed him from bologna a very very nice left back this is probably our first choice left back now him and doiga kind of gonna lock that left back position down obviously a former celtic player played for hearts as well then off to italy he went so we've got a very nice scottish core here if we go and take a look at things 
we're slowly starting to get a fully Scottish squad. Now, I've got a couple of the youngsters here that are five-star potential still, uh, but obviously we've got Connor Goldson, we've got Ennis Hadji, um, Shakala here is, is, is in there as well. This Polish guy is here, Australian. I need, should probably just cancel his contract. So we're getting there. We're getting there in terms of full uh, full Scottish takeover. Um, if we go in terms of the competitions, obviously group stage in, in, in the Champions League again, and obviously the same other domestic competitions. In terms of the premiership we've won it back to back now are we the favorites to win it no it's still celtic celtic are still the team to be obviously they've got matt ryan in goal now uh, most of the midfield in this media dream 11 is all celtic so we've definitely got uh definitely got a little bit of a job to do here in terms of the tactic and the team obviously the tactic is staying exactly the same if we quick pick without restriction <sighs> this is how we're looking going into season number three. McCrory has come in. He is the number one goalkeeper for us now. So Suta and Calvin Ramsey are kind of battling out to be that right back for us. Goldson, McKenna, Hickey, uh, Jack and Turnbull locking down these uh, these two central midfield spots. Haji, Gould, Fraser and Sakala are the guys to score the goals. Haji had a very good season for us last year. I will touch on that. Uh, 23 goals and 13 assists for him in the SPL. A very, very good return. Hoping he can have another exceptional year for us in season number three. Let's simulate and see how we get on. Season three, we've potentially been guilty for what Rangers were found out for in real life in the season just gone, prioritizing a European competition. We put all of our eggs into this European competition basket and unfortunately fell at the penultimate hurdle. In this competition screen, you can see Premier Sports Cup not tying the semi-finals by Celtic. Very, very disappointing. I want to win this competition. We won it in the first season, and I want to get my hands back on it again. Celtic have won it for the previous two seasons. What we've won for the previous two seasons, though, is the Scottish Cup. Uh, we have now picked up the Scottish Cup title for consecutive seasons. This time around, beating St. Johnston 7-1 absolutely thumping them ryan gould billy gilmore lewis ferguson uh sakala and connor goldson on the score sheet as well doing really really good things here ryan gould actually playing as a striker which is uh definitely interesting from my assistant manager champions league europe wise we were in the same group as man city rb leipzig and my boys red star uh we did finish on nine points with a relatively all right showing uh but unfortunately not good enough so we dropped down into the europa league now if we take a look at the europa league here uh atalanta did go on all the way to win it which is quite nice if we take a look at the europa league in our schedule though that's probably the easiest way to see the run in uh, Europa League here we go so familiar cow we uh, we took on this team here uh, I believe they're from Portugal please tell me they're from Portugal they are from Portugal love that uh, we beat them 7-1 then we took on Arsenal actually quite a difficult game uh, lost 1-0 at home at Ibrox Bakayo Saka with a goal uh, but then we won at the Emirates which is a nice little turn up for the books 5-3 there then we took on Wolfsburg in the course of finals 2-0s in both those games relatively consistent there and we took on Atalanta in that semi-final drew 1-1 away from home allowing that a late uh, that late goal is kind of a little bit of a killer then we lost 1-0 at home anyway um so very disappointing we got to the europa league semi-final not as good as ever uh, rangers in real life so <clears throat> and because of that run if we go into the cinch premiership celtic have won the title 96 points is actually the highest points return that we have seen in the spl in this uh, three years so far too many draws man 10 draws we just could not score enough goals in our games if we take a look at stuff and expand this table a little bit uh, we did score as many as celtic we did concede one more than celtic but yeah just too many draws in these games that we should not be giving up man um i think this tactic's well capable of scoring a lot more goals than it did do uh but we kind of are lacking that striker this guy here sakala uh fashion sakala has done pretty pretty well 15 goals <laughs> 15 goals last season in 23 games is really good 15 and 27 not as good this time around so we'll probably be looking at signing ourselves a striker um i will say billy gilmore has now joined us on a full-time basis he was available for 12 million pounds in the january window and i asked my board to go and get him and they did which was really really nice we didn't have the money to go and get him ourselves um in terms of us going and making the transfer happen but i interacted with the board and i said i really want this guy and they said yes steve you're right let's go get him 
So we've got Billy Gilmore for 12 million pounds as well now. So the team's looking pretty stacked. But we don't have a lot of cash going into season number four. 5.6 million uh, to spend improving this team and seeing what we can do. Let's try and make some transfers happen going into season number four. So guys, this is a huge transfer outgoing, unfortunately. Ines Haji has been tapped up by PSG. He is no longer a Rangers player. Um, he is now playing in France. 28 million pounds they paid for Haji. Um, which probably isn't as much as I could have got for him, but he wanted to leave. Um, so we had to unfortunately let him go off the back of two incredible seasons for us, uh, which is really disappointing. Obviously, it's one of those things when you get a little bit deeper in these European competitions, you can kind of see some of the other teams looking, whirring, you know, thinking we, we should really sign that guy. And they did, unfortunately. So 28 million. Um, we signed this guy here, Gary Stewart, uh, from... Uh, Inverness obviously this new gen face pack is uh, giving him a face so obviously these are new gens but I'm using the Zila new gen face pack again another good prospect very good rating for the senior team excellent rating for the senior team that's his range on his potential so I'm hoping he goes on I've loaned him back out to Inverness to give him a little bit more game time Dembele uh, comes in obviously the former uh, Celtic man I believe did he play for Celtic I'm so sure he played for Celtic at some point or have I got completely the wrong Dembele? Either way, we've signed Dembele from Bournemouth. He can come in, he can play as a natural on both sides. Free transfer for us, not really played for Bournemouth too much. Oh, actually, he's played a decent amount, but a lot of those are substitute appearances in the Premier League for the last two seasons. Uh, and then we also signed this guy, Ross Campbell uh, from, um, from Kilmarnock. Again, another young player, has good technique, can pass the ball. You can kind of see what we're trying to do here. We're trying to go and like sign these younger Scottish players as they sort of appear at some of these other clubs uh, we didn't spend a huge amount of money it's kind of because we didn't really have it to spend ourselves if we go and take a look at the squad now we are all oh, I still got this guy Murray Miller I need to really really release you we are all Scottish in terms of our squad now except from uh, Sakala who is transfer listed we are trying to get rid of Sakala so this is the team going into this season uh, McCrory, Sutar, McKenna, McIntyre, Hickey, Turnbull, Gilmore, Wright, uh, Gould, Fraser then we've got Sakala up top now Scott Wright is not great I'm probably going to give him a new contract so we need somebody in that position uh, but there are so many spots that we are trying to get players in but the talent pool in Scotland isn't necessarily there. I will try and step things up as much as I can, but ultimately I'm quite happy with how this team is looking going into season number four. Obviously, um, we've got the same competitions as previous. We do need to qualify for the Champions League this time around. And in terms of that season preview, Celtic are three to 10 favorites to win the SPL. I'd like to think that we can get our hands back on it. Um, fingers crossed we can. Let's simulate the season. So guys, before we talk about season number four, I've got to talk about this guy. Wayne McWilliam. Now, I did sign him just after the transfer or just before the transfer deadline. Um, so the season had started, but I was really, really trying to get a deal done for this young Scottish player. 18 years of age. He's come from Aberdeen. He is, of course, a new gen. But you can kind of see here, he does look really, really good. Now, we did spend a lot of money on him. We did spend £22 million on him, but he scored 24 goals. So I was saying that we were lacking that goal scoring threat. And I'm hoping this 18-year-old has been the, the kind of missing piece for us. And if we take a look at some... Ah, oh, it's, it's already started the Champions League. We'll have to go and take a look at the season. I basically forgot to save it at the right point, guys. So we're knocked out in the Premier Sports Cup by Aberdeen in the quarterfinals. Knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Scottish Cup by Hearts. We'll talk about Europe in a second. And in terms of the Cinch Premiership, Celtic won it again. 94 points for them we didn't have a really good season 85 um 85 points is a really poor return but we do now have our goal scorer so i'm hoping in this fifth and final season we can kind of push on if we take a look at our schedule though if i go back and take a look um we were in champions league group a uh, it's already started this, the, the next season's campaign. Uh, so we were in a group with Wolfsburg. We were in a group with uh, Inter Milan and Manchester City. Uh, naturally, we didn't make it. Uh, no, we did make it out of there, which is happy days. Love that for us. Then we got into the knockout stages. We took on Villarreal. We beat them 2-1 at home. We beat them 2-1 away from home. Then we get into the quarterfinals and we take on Arsenal. 
We beat Arsenal in the quarterfinals. 2-2 draw at the Emirates. Then we bring them back to Ibrox and beat them 2-1. Uh, then we get into the semi-finals of the Champions League this time around. Semi-finalists in the Europa League last season. Semi-finalists in the Champions League. And we come up against Man City who have got Mbappe. Uh, we lost 5-0 at the Etihad. And then 8-1 um, at Ibrox. Yeah. This team, though. Edison, Cancelo, Fofana, Diaz, Laporte, De Jong. Um, I assume that's Frankie De Jong. It is Frankie De Jong. Alongside De Bruyne, Declan Rice, Foden, Haaland, and Mbappe. Can you see why I lost? Can you see why I lost, guys? Uh, granted, the scoreline's ridiculous, but can you see why I lost? Ay, yeah, yeah. So probably the pri the prioritization of the Champions League being on that run that we were on was probably something that led to our downfall. Hopefully, going into this fifth and final season, we can right this wrong and reclaim this Scottish Premier League title. Right then, guys, so before we get into this fifth and final season, if you watch my rebuilds every single week, you know at this point of the video, I will ask you to comment something down below. And we are going to comment up the jurors for Rangers, obviously, going into this fifth and final season. It's been a 2-2 split. Rangers have won twice. Celtic have won twice. I need to win this fifth and final season. So comment that down below and let's get into season numbers five. So we've got some transfers here. Obviously, we spoke about Wayne McWilliam coming in last season. We've also picked up a couple of other players as well. Uh, Matthew Shields, 16 years of age, coming through the youth setup at Ross County. Uh, we paid the compensation to sign him immediately, which was 600 K for a player of this caliber I think as a promising attacking midfielder yes I know he's 16 yes I know he's only five foot seven he has so many traits to be very 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 good immediately um we've also picked up uh John Peacock from uh Dundee United he again has another four and a half star potential I'm not really seeing it with this guy but he's got nice bravery got good leadership got good teamwork so I'm allowing him to pan out for a season to see how he gets on we also signed James Taylor from Wraith um here he is uh coming out of Wraith coming out of Queen's Park actually picked up by Wraith we've signed him from Wraith loaned him back for a season because we don't need him but again another potential player that we could see in our senior team we touched on Hadji leaving we sold another couple players as well uh, Josh Doig wanted to leave. Obviously, after the signing of Hickey, he wasn't getting as much game time as he wanted. So we've sold him to Union Berlin. He's gone now for 11.75 million. Good signing for that. Uh, Sakala's also gone as well to Bologna. We also signed this guy as well. Another new gen, Stuart Ray, coming out of Manchester City. Again, another new gen who I think is really, really good. He's had a year on loan at Norseland where he didn't play at all. So hopefully he can play for me. A uh, hard working midfielder, good stamina, good teamwork, good work rate all of the above good things which you love to see so in terms of our squad right here right now going into season number five it's taken five years but we have a full squat a squattish full scottish squad going into this season now obviously we've got some really really good players if we go into the tactics section quick pick without restriction our best 11 this is how we are looking so we've got mccrory in there as this uh, goalkeeper we've got ramsey mckenna mcintyre and hickey i like this defense a lot we've got gilmore alongside turnbull fraser gould dembele and then obviously the main man mcwilliam up top now i do have to touch on this other guy who's come through my youth intake and for some reason i can't spot his name somewhere where is he where is he where is he he's a central midfielder no not shields that's the one we've just signed why can i not see him oh my god you know when you sign new gens and you just cannot remember their name if i find him towards the end guys i will have to tell you because I can't find him. If we go into here, potential Matthew Shields, no, McWilliam, no. Ah, here he is. Mackenzie Winter. This is a guy who came through my youth intake. He's come through the Rangers setup. We've played him a, a little bit of time. Uh, he's only 18 years of age. Another four and a half star potential player, but really nice first touch. Great passing and stuff like that. Um, this guy has come through my youth intake, so I just wanted to show him off to you. Number 36 for Rangers, and he's played a decent amount for us. We played him a lot last season. I don't know if he's going to play 
play this season because instead of developing the youth we are gunning to try and win stuff so obviously our team's really good we're, we're really nice and stacked now and obviously we're with uh, mcwilliam up top i'm hoping we can go all the way and retain uh, uh retain some silverware and obviously win some more silverware we have to qualify for the champions league again and for this fifth and final time in this season in this uh in this rebuild we will take a look celtic now two to five we have one player in this media dream 11 and it's billy bloody gilmore this celtic team's looking pretty straight is that draxler why is he at celtic madness but celtic are the team to beat obviously they've won it for the last two years i want to finish the fifth and final season out with a bang out with a scottish premiership title Let's simulate and see if I can make that happen. Right, guys, so an impressive run in season number five. Sees us get to quite a few finals, to be perfectly honest. So we'll start off on the right-hand side, and then we'll move across to the left-hand side. So unfortunately, runners-up in the Premier Sports Cup. We did get to the final of that. We did lose that one. 2-1 to Celtic so we won it in the first season then Celtic have won it every single season since then we got into the Scottish Cup final this one's much more important and we won this one we did beat Celtic on penalties uh, Lewis Ferguson scoring our goal we had a couple players miss as well. Gould, uh, McKenna and Winter all missed their penalties, but lots of players missing for Celtic. So we do take home the Scottish Cup trophy for the third time in five seasons, which is obviously probably a little bit more uh, coveted than some of uh, than the Premier Sports Cup. Let's talk about Europe Champions League. We were in a group with Man United and PSG. Uh, we were never going to qualify through there so we got dropped into the Europa League got all the way to the quarterfinals where unfortunately we lose quite heavily to Arsenal um yes okay we lost 3-2 at home to Arsenal it was the game at the Emirates as I can see the aggregate score is 9-3 so not the best showing in this entire rebuild in Europe but ultimately I think we've progressed for a fully Scottish team I think we've progressed quite nicely now let's talk about the cinch premiership we are the holders 91 points we beat celtic by three points to get the job done towards the end of the season i'm happy with how things have gone we get that third scottish title in five years for this scottish only rebuild of rangers which i've really enjoyed to be perfectly honest it's really made me think of a different way of how i want to play fm looking for these new gens right off the rip as soon as they're spawned into the game and picking up the best talents in the world which you will see in next week's rebuild if you've enjoyed this rebuild guys please do let me know down in the comments who you would like me to rebuild next and if you do like the rebuild content check out this playlist popping up right here right now for you guys to check out all the other videos and all the other teams that we've rebuilt in this game cycle so far